Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching the Privacy Guides. Today is the first time we're gonna dip our toe into Bitcoin. The reason why I'm talking about Bitcoin now is some of you suggested I should have a Bitcoin receiving address for donations. And although you absolutely don't have to donate and I'm super glad to do this stuff for you guys, well, the idea was kind of attractive to me. Now, I didn't know much about Bitcoin, so that got me into the Bitcoin rabbit hole. And today I want to share with you guys something that kind of blew my mind, and that is paper backups. I find paper backups are really shitty from a privacy and a security perspective, and here's why. For those of you who don't know what a paper backup is, well, it essentially is something like this that one would write on a piece of paper using pen and paper. When we set up multi-sig wallets, uh, for instance, using Electrum on Mac and at Trezor, not sure if this is going to focus. Uh, well, essentially, the Trezor will generate its private key material on its own and it will display to the user a mnemonic phrase, which essentially is a set of 12 or 24 words. Uh, and those words need to be backed up because if this piece of hardware breaks, well, we just lost one of the signing entities of the multi-sig wallet. So in the context of a two of three, if you lose you know, two of them, well, goodbye the funds. So since I'm kind of overkill and I wanna do things securely and I'm really happy to use this opportunity to set up a wallet for donations, but also kind of share my, my thought process with you guys, well, I am not comfortable writing words on paper. So in a second, I'm going to talk about an alternative and also an open source project that I need help with. But before I do this, I want to start by saying thanks to everyone who has starred the Privacy Guides repository. It's a great way of establishing trust. So thanks so much. If you haven't and you're down, I'll link it in the description. Now, another little announcement. I'm working slowly on another idea for another channel and I need your help to get 100 subs so I can kind of grab the name I have in mind. So if you don't mind subscribing to this, I'll also link that in the description and I would be super thankful. 100 subs, I can get my name and that is nailed. All right, so um, there, let's, let's just take a step back, okay? What alternatives do we have to a paper backup? Well, since we cannot extract the key material from the Trezor, well, it has to use those words and they have to be written on paper first. Well, an alternative that I really like is using a Raspberry Pi, which has an ARM processor as a cold computing device. So the Raspberry Pi, now give me a second here. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know what the Raspberry Pi is, uh, Raspberry Pis are little single uh, chip boards or what? A, what's the word for that? Anyways, little tiny computers that are capable of doing pretty cool stuff. So in the context of the Raspberry Pi, it actually has a built-in random number generator or a hardware random number generator on the chip. That means that it's pretty good for cryptography. It's able to generate enough entropy to be able to encrypt stuff properly. And it runs like a modified version of Debian, meaning we can install all kinds of stuff using APT on it. One thing being GPG or GNUPG actually. So that is something that we can use to encrypt information. Then uh, the question is, once this device is set up in a cold way, meaning Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is disabled, how can we get information out of it? Well, something that I've been amazed by and that is so useful for those kind of scenarios are QR codes. Uh, now, what I really like about QR codes, now let's, let's just start by, you know, uh, selling this a little bit. Well, this here is a 12 word mnemonic and this here is a paper backup using a QR code of an encrypted version, AES uh, 256 encrypted version of that same sentence. Uh, now this here is way, way, way better because first it's encrypted using military grade standards and second, one of the really cool properties of QR codes is there is error recovery built into it, into the specification when implemented. So in the context of this code here, we can lose up to 30% of what you see on the piece of paper and we can still extract that encrypted version of the mnemonic phrase. And that is super cool. Now doing this on a Raspberry Pi that has been configured and that no longer has networking or Bluetooth capabilities means that we can generate it on this display a QR code on our television or on an external monitor 
And then we can read that using an iPhone or any other app. And it's in encrypted form at that point in time. So we can read it and then we can print it. So we can read it, generate a new version of it and print it on a printer. And that's how I got to this. Now that is a much safer way of creating paper backups. And that actually works for any secret. It works for a mnemonic phrase, but it also works for any password or any piece of information you want to store. The QR code here will essentially get bigger the longer the string is fed into the system. So I mentioned that I need your help for this project and here's why. Uh, I created a small project on GitHub called QR Backup and it kind of establishes a proof of concept of how this can be done. So it actually works uh, like this. So I've installed all of this stuff on my computer and we take a really long little line here if you want to try it and paste it into our terminal. So here's what's going on. We use echo to echo a mnemonic phrase. This is a 12, 12 word to GPG. And we then configure that in the safest way that GPG can do symmetric encryption. GPG is not the best, but I'll explain why I like the idea of GPG in a second, although it's debatable and I really would like to have your feedback. There's an issue open on the GitHub repository for this project to actually get a conversation going. But essentially it will encrypt this and it will use uh, armor to make sure that it is like it outputs something that's not binary, it's something that is printable, and is then piped to this little Python script that I created. And what that Python script does, well, it uses a library uh, called PyQR code to generate a QR code from it, and it then uses um, CV2, which is Python OpenCV, to display it on screen. So that is super cool. That means that we can essentially generate all of this stuff on a Raspberry Pi and then see what we did, scan it on another computer and print it. So that project, or at least this idea of using QR codes for paper backups is something that really got me excited. And if it got some of you excited and if you code in Python, I can really use your help to be honest. I'm not much of a Python developer, but yeah, I'm sure you guys would have amazing feedback. So please look at the repo. One thing that I'm really looking forward to is dropping that OpenCV dependency and using the frame buffer instead. I don't like the idea of users having to install a desktop environment on the Raspberry Pi. I would rather have this be command line only and displayed through uh, a frame buffer. So I, and to be honest, I don't know how to do this. I know how to display an image on the frame buffer uh, using FBI if that's, I think, I think that's the library, but I want to make sure that this is done in a way that doesn't use the file system so that no traces are left on this, even though it would be encrypted. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you today. This is kind of like our entry in the privacy guides in the world of Bitcoin, a lot more content to come as I bring you guys along my journey, establishing a really secure multi-sig wallet. Um, and again, I really need your help for this project. Please have a look. I kind of documented this train of thought I have and would love to get your feedback. So yeah, thanks. I'll see you soon. Bye.